Hello everyone, welcome back to our pediatric channel. Yesterday in our shorts and also in our uh, Insta, uh, Insta Reels, I have posted about our hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Today we will see in detail about the pathogenesis of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and also the Sarnat and Sarnat classification. Why? Because the Sarnat and Sarnat classification is a very important table for your NEET PG and also for your uh, viva session okay so what is perinatal asphyxia according to who so i have written here already it is nothing but a failure to initiate it is failure to initiate or sustain breathing in the child is called as perinatal asphyxia according to who what it is according to uh, uh, american academy of pediatrics or how will you define a uh, perinatal asphyxia according to american academy of pediatrics to tell that the child is having perinatal asphyxia you should need all the four points that is being present here first one is the child's ph of your umbilical cord blood so ph of the umbilical cord blood should be less than seven. Second point the apgar score should be less than three in five minutes third point the child should show the signs of neurological dysfunction so what are the signs of neurological dysfunction that you should identify these will be like the child showing some amount of seizures or any abnormal tone or any abnormal conscious level these are the signs of neurological dysfunction fourth the child should also show the signs of multi organ failure or multi organ dysfunction the first organ to be affected in perinatal asphyxia is your brain the second most common organ is organ the second most common organ to be affected in your perinatal asphyxia is your kidney so when your kidney or when the child's kidney is being affected the child will result in acute tubular necrosis second when the GI tract of the child is being affected, the child will show the signs of necrotizing enterocolitis. Third, when the child's pulmonary region is being involved, the child will show the signs of respiratory failure. Fourth, when the child's cardiology is being involved or cardiovascular system is being involved, the child will show the signs of myocardial dysfunction. So, these are the some of the uh, signs of your multi-organ dysfunction. Okay next what is the pathogenesis behind this hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy hie is nothing but your h stands for hypoxia i stands for ischemia and e stands for your encephalopathy so it is nothing but hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy so when there is a decreased oxygenation decreased oxygenation meaning hypoxia when there is an ischemia, ischemia meaning a decreased blood supply to the brain. This decreased oxygenation and decreased blood supply to the brain results in encephalopathy. Encephalopathy is damage to the parenchymal tissue of your brain. So hypoxia meaning decreased oxygenation and ischemia meaning decreased blood supply to the brain which together results in your encephalopathy. So this causes your primary injury. So what will be the primary injury here? The primary injury will be mainly due to the necrosis. So in this diagram I have shown this is a necrotic region supposing imagine this is a necrotic region so necrosis will be your primary injury this can be your one one liner okay first one liner the primary injury in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is necrosis the area surrounding this necrosis is called as the region surrounding this necrotic region is called as penumbra okay when there is a reperfusion so when there is a reperfusion of blood it results in damage to this penumbra area a region okay why because the reperfusion causes of increase in free radicals when the free radicals is being increased this results in apoptosis apoptosis meaning it is a programmed cell death it results in apoptosis of the uh, penumbra region okay so what is your time gap between this primary and secondary injury taking place so primary injury is your necrosis and secondary injury is your apoptosis here so the time gap between your primary and the secondary injury to occur here will be your six hours so six hours is the time period between your primary to secondary injury to happen so within this six hours you should initiate the, the specific treatment for moderate to severe hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is your therapeutic hypothermia so you should 
uh, ends, I mean, you should uh, start on this therapeutic hypothermia within this six hours to prevent what? To prevent your secondary injury. You can't prevent the primary injury. Primary injury has already happened because of decreased oxygenation and decreased blood supply to the brain at the time of birth. So, you cannot stop primary injury. You have to stop the secondary injury. To stop this secondary injury, only you are in, uh, starting on this therapeutic hypothermia within 6 hours. Why? Because 6 hours, 6 hours is the cutoff uh, for the damage to take place okay, between your primary and your secondary injury. Third, we have read about this HIE staging in our shots. First one is your Levin staging. Levin staging has four components. One will be your consciousness. Second one will be your tone. Third is seizure. And fourth is second next third the second score is your thompson score this thompson score is based on the features of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy your maximum score will be 22 supposing if the child has a score of more than uh, 15 that it will result in abnormal neurological outcome so this will result in abnormal neurological outcome at 12 months of age next third score we have here is our sarnat and sarnat this is very important table you have to remember Okay, so this Sarnat and Sarnat is based upon the three stages. So stage one, stage two, and stage three. In stage one, the child's sympathetic activ activity will be more. In stage two, the child's parasympathetic activity will be increased. While in stage three, the child's both sympathetic and parasympathetic activity will be lost. So when the sympathetic activity is increased, what will be the finding or what will you see? Look in the child. The child will have a hyper alert state. While in parasympathetic activity, child will be lethargic. When both this being is lost, the child will be in a coma stage. Okay, next. What will be the pupil in a child with the increased sympathetic activity? It will be in a midriasis. While if the parasympathetic activity is more, the child's pupil will be in meiotic stage. That is meiosis. When both sympathetic and parasympathetic activity is lost, the child will have a sluggish response. Sluggish pupillary response. What will be the heart rate? Heart rate will be increased uh, in stage 1. In stage 2, heart rate will be decreased. In stage 3, heart rate will be variable. Next. Seizure will be present mainly in stage 2. It will not be present in stage 1 and stage 3. Duration. Duration, this is for less than 24 hours. While in stage 2, it is between 24 hours till 14 days. While stage 3 can last for variable period or variable number of days. Since the seizure activity is present only in stage 2, there will be a spike-like activity in stage 2. In stage 3, the child is in a coma stage. So, the child will have a burst suppression pattern. Next, what is the outcome? So, outcome meaning... What will be their neurological outcome in a child with stage 1 of HIE? This R0 is for HIE. Okay. So, in uh, stage 1, it is 99% of the ninety-nine percentage of the child will be normal and 1% will lead on to an abnormal neurological outcome. This is abnormal neurologic outcome. So, while in stage 2, 80% of the child will be normal, while 20% of the child will go to this abnormal neurologic outcome. In stage 3, 50% of the child will die, while 50% of the child will go into CP, that is with the abnormal neurological outcome. Fine. So, this is a short video on your hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Next video, we will see about the pathology and the treatment part of your hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Thank you.